Anybody, <laughs> let my like, pain be my pain. Your pain be my pain. <laughs> no, it's a beautiful house. Uh, thank you. And I look forward to going to the cat ranch. Apparently, I'll be the like 5,000th. How the fuck have I not been on your show? It's far away. I don't, gonna... That's bullshit and you know it. What was the mental block where it never dawned on you to have me on your show? There must be a reason because you've had people on your show where I go... That fucking guy before me? <laughs> it's like the Montreal Just for Laughs Festival. You become the legitimizing factor in a comic's well, life. I, I, like, I, I, like, well, hold on. Like, well, I did WTF with Mark Marin. Like, it is like a, a ticket punching sort of validation. Like, now that's what I meant earlier about the outsider. Now you're the ultimate insider. We want to go yeah. to the cat ranch and get our that fucking guy. card stamp. I, we want that stamp on all our right, hand. Okay. So I, 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 don't, I, I don't see myself like that. I'm flattered that you see me like, my like I, that. You need to be as excited about you as I am. All right, I am. <laughs> no, I have the other fucking big deal. Yeah, yeah. I do a lot of fucking favors for you, Mark, don't I? <laughs> Jesus Christ, a fucking Jew broad in right. this day and age. <laughs> Prejudice against fucking Italians. Why the fuck aren't I in a fucking cat ranch? I like fucking animals. I'm St. Francis fucking a sissy here, Mark. All right, you're in. You're in. You're in. I'll call you. Have your guy. Was we'll there, do did my name ever came up and you glossed over it? I don't give a fuck. You do give a fuck. I mean, now I don't give a fuck because I know we'll figure it out. No, I think what it was what was... What the fuckers, um, what the fuckers. Well, yeah, I think what it I was was it really just... I don't know. You're one of those guys. Like, there's only a couple of guys that, that you know... Uh, I don't know if it's intimidating, but I just didn't know if I could... You know, if you started busting my balls, I didn't know if I could quite handle it. Like, you know, like we have a relationship, but we don't... It's not like we hang out with each other. And I certainly yeah. have no malice towards right. you. But um, I think that... You know, I got nervous that uh, you would hand me my ass somehow. So I, what am I going to do? It seems, and it's amazing how cathartic a podcast can be, but it seems like through, I, I didn't realize this about myself, but, but I think it's from when I met my wife. I don't think I've said one ball-busting thing to you off mic or on since you've been, I mean, and comedically, listeners are like, what about that fucking thing you said in 11 minutes? Yeah. <laughs> but is there, have you, have you noticed that there's a piece... That's been removed of that aggression and that ball busting. I honestly, I, you know, it's weird. Maybe um, I think there was a time there was like, I, like fuck. I mean, I have a lot of memories of you. I remember when you used to, you know, date that girl that wore the one piece outfits all the time. You know, the, with the shorts. Who was that cute girl with the round face? You oh, Keon. Yeah, maybe. I don't. Down Lower East Side. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I remember, you know, and I think there was a time where. Like, I ran into you. You knew me literally like 19, 20 years old when I was. Like, yeah, 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 yeah. And, you know, and, and you, you were cocky, but we always got along. I remember coming to your house. I gave you that CD. I wanted to help you out with some blues music. But I, I'm sure I was jealous of you. There's no doubt about that. And, I, and I'm sure that happened. But there was some moment where I ran into you. Maybe it was at the Laugh Factory or something. And it, I don't think it was a good time in your life. And, no, you was, see, yeah. and you seemed like, you know, like disturbingly angry. Yeah. And, and like, there, there was just this moment there where I'm like, this, this kid is dangerous right now. If you notice somebody's angry, <laughs> yeah. you got it. Because but was, was I right? I mean, I oh, don't. Oh, yeah. No, a hor- horrible, horrible union of two people that was never meant to be. You talk about the marriage. Probably. The I, I, I just, I, I'm not even no sure dads. what was going on. Uh, I married somebody that, I married the wrong person. Mm-hmm. And that'll really fuck your head up. Like, you, you walk the dog a lot when you're married to the wrong person. Because you can't stand being in the house. Yeah. And when you can't stand being in your own home, it yeah. fucks up the very core of who you are as a man. Like yeah. Going back to caveman shit. Like, I can't go in my own cave because right. I'm going to fucking kill everybody in it. Right. Uh, yeah, it was brutal. And being an alcoholic and being fucking drunk and angry and just... You were or she was? Me, well, I'll keep her out of it. Me, Wait, oh, my really? side, sure, yeah. You were going down. Yeah, and I didn't know... Like, I, I don't... And that's not up to you mm-hmm. and, or anyone else to... No one, no one should have the assignment of wading through my shit to reach me to figure out what it is. If you put up that much fucking barbed wire and landmines, well then fucking fuck him. He's out. And yeah, I, I understand just, that. I just and I'm felt, hearing that now a lot. Right. I just felt at that time like, you know, I didn't like you had that vibe where it's like uh you know, he's at a place where, you know, people are going to go down around him. <laughs> Do you, you know what I mean? Like someone's going to take the hit. And and I just I I uh, I think that but I honestly never had any problem with you, and I'm sure that there was just some residual, you know, jealousy. Like, there was part of me that's like, you know, like, oh, Jay, his head, you know, he had all these great things, you know, he's got, you know, his whole... How dare he be angry? Well, not that. It was just sort of like, you know, there there was still part of me that was like, uh, 
yeah, now he's uh, what? Now he's he wants to do what I do. You know, there's a, you know, now, yeah, whatever. I, it, no, 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 just, I know what you mean. Keep going. <laughs> what are you, you, bring what you it mean, all like, the way up to the present. Well, there's just a, like there's, now he's got to do. I, why can't I have the fucking podcast world? Why does Jay Moore have to get involved in the podcasting? Well, I just he's got I, movies. He's got a nice well, wife. The other, some like this is my shit now. Well, well it was sort of like this is for us, and you know, now he's yeah. here and he's bringing Barry with him. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Mark, I got to tell you, man, what you've done. <laughs> Barry, by the way, 100% approval rating on the internet, which, as you know, is unheard of. What does that mean? I mean, there's never been a negative thing tweeted, typed, message boarded about Barry Katz when he sits there. Yeah. Because people think they don't... They, because you present the guy, no baggage, no history. Here's a guy sitting down, and then they just hear Yoda. Like, let me tell you something, man. These comics that talk shit are like, like said, bed like, bugs. All I've heard about you or him is hearsay. My experience with both of you has been fine, and my own jealousy uh, with you is not unusual for me. No, but I mean, and, I, and to listeners of my podcast that can go listen to your podcast, you're very open about it. And with the Michael Ian Black thing, you, it really came to a head to me with your epiphany of yourself. Like I do this comedy this way, and if you do it another way. I don't dig that, and I fuck. I don't like that you're doing it a different way because the way I'm doing it is the way I know how. Is what you would well, say? Well, well, no, that's not true. I mean, that's I'm, what you said. I'm quoting you, actually. No, the, to him. <laughs> I'm quoting you to, to Michael Ian to Black. Michael Ian Black, like because here's improv guys coming in. Well, sketch guys, but over, he's also a difficult guy, and he like I just wanted to get past that that but, game we were yeah. playing. But like I don't know how to do it any other way. But my my I've always uh, you know laughed at the, the people I laugh at are not like me usually. And there yeah. actually there's not that many people like me, and I wouldn't choose the way I am. But uh, but like you know the guys I like are are, are goofier guys. Or my favorite comics are like Maria Bamford. I like Madrigal. Amazing. I like you know I mean there I uh, Todd Berry. You know like the people, apologize apologize. Ouch, buddy. Where we eating? Where we eating? Um, but, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I have those issues, and I, I really don't have anything. I just didn't, I never knew how we would engage. I just didn't know. I didn't know where you were at. You seem better. I will. And the thing about Barry, look, he's a lovely man when you listen to him, and, and I tell you, he helped me out. But, you know, you hear things. Yeah, I heard things, Joey. I hear a lot of things. You got all the answers, but you don't have the right answer. He got out of line. I fucking smacked him around. I told you about that at the Copa Cabana, didn't I? I, I heard things. What I, the fuck? Kill everybody. I, <laughs> kill Barry. Kill fucking Madrigal. Kill me. Do me a fucking favor. Kill me too. You put you with them. Yeah. <laughs> That's the most mind fuck scene in Raging Bull when LaMotta says to yeah, Joey, yeah, 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 yeah. he goes, you don't even know what you mean. And in that moment, Joey LaMotta realizes, I don't even know what the fuck. Like, it's like a Jedi mind trick. He goes, you put you with them. Yeah. You could have said anybody. You said you. You said Joey Salvi me. You could have said anybody. That means something. Yeah. You know, what that, you know what's sad about that scene? That's uh, my second marriage. Really? <laughs> You're LaMotta? <laughs> yeah, of the, course. The Bronx yeah. Bull. What did you mean by that? Yeah, yeah. A... I saw I've Joe Pesci movie at like a gas station. Times. And I, do you think he fucked Vicky LaMotta in no. the movie? No. See, I think absolutely. Because what are your reasons for no? Because he's loyal. No, leave that open. The breeze is delightful. What, what are your reasons for you don't think? Can well, you, if he did, why wouldn't they have – that would have added so much to the movie. I mean, why wouldn't they have put it in? I think it, that was all about you know, an isolated, paranoid guy's In the you know, beginning anger. of the movie, he says, I'm your brother. You asked me once. I always tell you the first time. Yeah. And that's a question he never answered. Oh, you mean like did he fuck her before – uh, at all, at any time, did Joey LaMotta fuck Vicky LaMotta? No, I, I honestly don't think that any of them did. You know, that was the way it was played. Yeah? You don't because, think the mob no, had their way with her? You no. You think it was all LaMotta just spiraling out? No, or I think that... Is that what that, you have to tell yourself to legitimize the second marriage? No, no. No, I think <laughs> that in the movie it's established that, you know, a lot of times, you know, these guys, you know, there, there are girls that do that, and then there are girls that they're sort of trying to get to do that. And it became pretty clear from the first sex scene with the two of them, that she wasn't, you know, that chick. You know, because like, I think if she was some sort of pig, it would have been different. De Niro, I think you said it. I think I know more of what you said than you do because I really like you as a comic. You said De Niro now has just become a series of ticks that he strings together. Well, movies. no, it's just like these method guys just become, you know, a, a sort of a series he knows to of, do his thing. Of, of ticks and, and, and twitches. That yeah, y- it's like, like this is how I assemble the Frankenstein monster and make right, it go. Right, right. We act now. Yeah, right, right, right. And you're right. 
empty dicks and twitches that you know define their their persona yeah, and i completely agreed with you and but in raging bull one of the single greatest 180 degree turns de niro like this, there was such greatness in this fucking guy oh, that nice when you see him in rocky and bull you're like come on bro like you're not even fucking trying like pacino is fucking trying still he's digging like searching for richard and then when he's in that bullshit movie with De Niro, where they're both cops. But did, what, did you see him in Kevorkian? That was great. He was incredible. He was great. He's a searcher. Yeah. And like, he, he, he never... got stuck. He got stuck for a while. He got stuck in that, you know, that, like... There's after, the flight off the fucking uh, t- hat, c- hat, cat on a hot roof After ro- a scent of a woman, he kind of got stuck in a yes. thing. But, and you know, he reward, went back. And they rewarded him for it. They gave him an Oscar for it. But I think De Niro, like, made this weird choice where he, want, he was going to, you know, as he got older, he found some success in comic parts. Pay me. And, Fuck yeah, and he, and he But he's funny at it. I mean, like, I can watch... I, I, and I, I'm not ashamed to admit, but any time Analyze This is on TV, I will fucking watch yeah, it. Yeah, I like it. Because there is some funny funny shit in there yeah. and and it's just you know and it's de niro doing what he does but so what i do yeah but that's doing what i do but that scene that that mark fucking, that shtick that he does at when they go to the mob funeral and yeah. and billy crystal standing there and he's hugging everybody that's the mother that's the brother and then that one guy comes up and hugs him and grabs him and kisses him and everything else him i don't know that that to me like that beat perfect I, timing yeah i wait for it him i don't know it's fucking hilarious you, but you were right about the De Niro thing. Well, yeah, because how can they manage to refill those things with real emotion after a certain point? No, but how? somehow Pacino does it. Sometimes. Sometimes. I mean, I'd be curious to see uh, De Niro rise to a challenge like, like Marlon Brando did a couple times later on. I wish someone would provoke him into an opportunity I don't that know, would challenge him. I agree with you but I, with, in the quest for that. But I don't know if like you put De Niro in Angels in America. I don't know if he could possibly That's rise to true. that. Like, whereas Pacino, you went, holy fuck balls. And this is other level shit. I think that's true. But they, they're, they're, they're sort of different talents. I mean, De, De Niro was always kind of like within himself a little bit. Like, I'm you, very out here, Mark. <laughs> yeah, he I'm is. still working yeah. on it. <laughs> yeah, he is. This one that's still being worked on. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. I used to sound like this, really high voice. You remember that? Dog day after Really day? high. Well, who's this under the desk? A squirrel? <laughs> Who else has to go to the bathroom? If you, any W, we play all the, when he answers the phone, any W, we play all the hits. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. then all of a sudden, but, oh, but then No, but Michael Corleone, that was some shit. Don't ever ask me about my business, Kenny. Very it's high voice. Lower. It's Tyne Daly. <laughs> Look, it's very Tyne Daly, Cagney and Lacey. <laughs> Don't ever, you broke my heart. But De Niro, like in, uh, but in Mean Streets, and then his, uh, Beautiful. The, yeah, the younger Vito Corleone, he was very deliberate. Yeah. I don't know where it went south for him, but he doesn't, I don't know. I mean, even Casino, like, eh, he was I kind of like, but you know what? It's a pair of glasses that makes the whole fucking thing at the end when he's put, doing the numbers as Ace, Ace Rothstein at the end with those big Coke bottle glasses. Yeah, like, yeah. the glasses to me are yeah. the star of the role. Yeah, that was the best part. But you, conversely, to these guys that you explain, you are now hitting your fucking peak. At, you're how old are you? 48. You're 48, and you are right fucking redlining success right now i Would hope you, so well i mean that's just how it goes i'm very happy to be earning an honest dollar it's a weird thing like before the podcast and even in the last year or so people ask well what do you want honestly i'd like to not die broke and have health insurance i mean like they like that's yeah. that's sort of you get to a certain age where it's like that because i've been in this a long time and one of the biggest fears i had like before the podcast was like i'm gonna i don't want to drift away i don't know what happens you don't to be us. one of those guys but i don't even know what happens to those guys I yeah. know some of them, but it's not. It's 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 scary. You know, we we hang our hopes on this fucking dream. Some people hit, some people don't. And you know, the longer you keep struggling at it, there's no miracle answer. No, you know, and, and it's what scary. I've re- what I've realized in the last like five years that there's a really huge middle class now in show business. Yeah, that we are now people in. just work. Yeah, we just fucking ham and egg it, and we're we're doing yeah. it. Yeah, and people listening be like, you were in fucking twenty eight movies. Yeah, it was was. And now, you know, we're doing this and doing the stand-up. Like, I'm going up to Cobbs and shit, like, and you're doing your dates and yeah, shit. And, yeah. But that middle class that we now find ourselves in, to accept that is one of the most liberating moments. I'm thrilled about it. Me like, too. You know, like, I mean, uh, but the I chase never... is over. But I never made the kind of money you, ever, you had in yeah. your life. So now, like... Like, I go out, and I'm not making a fortune, but I'm, doing, I'm making a good living at clubs. I couldn't even get booked at clubs. And now I'm going to comedy clubs, you know, and I'm doing door deals with them. And, you know, I see the money, and I'm like, are you sure this is right? And it's not, you know, <laughs> I, can, I don't have to take all this. Uh, but it's, it's not a fortune, but it's more than I ever fucking made. I mean, I was a $2,000, you know, a week, Wednesday through Sunday. Do you get more Sunday. money on Thursdays and Sundays? Do you get more of the door? 
I tried to go out on, on, on uh, no, I don't get more of the door. I think we do an over. I don't even understand the math on some of these things. All I know. I'm trying to tell the listeners if you're going to see Mark Maron and do comedy, like what night oh, is the oh, night oh, you no, get the no, most No, no, go money. anytime you want. All right. Just fucking go. Don't break his balls. Yeah, yeah. And he, like I said, he, doesn't he? It's, it's, it's not a fortune, but I'm like, I'm actually, I can work as a comic now. Two, three years ago, I could not get work as a comic. And that's all I knew how to do. So, you know, with the podcast, the weird thing is, is that people know me a lot better. Like, I'll do my act, and they'll be like, oh, that was great. Yeah, we heard, uh, like, a version of that before. But did you ever think, did you take care of that thing with the plumbing? You know, so it's a weird he, thing. Here's the, 